Understanding. A place for learning. Life transforming. Community. Ohana. Priceless. It was an innovative idea in the late 1950s. Build an educational institution to help Americans better understand Asia and the Pacific, and to help people of the region better understand America. In the Congress, Senator Lyndon Johnson of Texas and Hawaii Delegate John Burns called for building an east-west center in America's newest state. In islands that marked the beginning of a war, Washington wanted to build a center for regional understanding and cultural interchange. I think at that time in history, Hawaii was the place, the best place to do it. In Hawaii, you found a better blending of ethnic groups and better understanding between them. On the matter of civil rights, for example, because it's, it's important when you're gonna have Asian countries sending students, you know, for example, Pakistan and India sitting together. Now, at home, they might not be able to do that, but here in Honolulu, they were doing that. And it was, I think, a demonstration of what the center meant because of the atmosphere around the center itself. So I think Hawaii would have been the best place at that time in history. In 1963, construction began on an east-west center campus at the edge of the University of Hawaii. A young American architect who had been born in China, I.M. Pei, designed the plans. Well, at that time, it was a, it was a rather a novel idea to once again bring east and west closer together. Today, it seems like so natural. So East-West Center is something that is, you have to look at it at that particular time. And it was very much needed to bring the two together, to introduce West to the East and East to the West. Much of my work until then was mostly here in, in the United States and also a bit in Europe. So East-West Center gave me the opportunity to return, to go back home, so to speak, home again. I was happy to be able to play a small role in that. And it was nice, I enjoyed that. Students from Asia, the Pacific, and the United States arrived on the East-West Center campus. All began a journey that would change their lives. The first thing it did to me was really to expose me to a lot of my fellow Asians, um, in addition to Americans, whom I hadn't known a year earlier. So in that sense, it made me more aware of my own identity. It also made me more aware of my fellow Asians, uh, our similarities and our differences. My wife was a fellow grantee from Vietnam. Uh, we met here, studied together here, and we have been together over 40 years. Just as the center made such an impact on the students, it made a great impact on me and changed my whole viewpoint, broadened my horizons, changed my view of the world. It's not just about the classes, it's also about living together and working together and learning from each other. And that's had a big impact on me. More than 55,000 participants have taken part in East-West Center programs since 1960. Alumni have become presidents and prime ministers, members of parliaments, senior journalists, leading educators, and business executives. This was probably the first place to really focus on uh, environmental issues in the region. One of the biggest issues uh, of today in virtually uh, every country. In uh, 10 years ago, we started finally, after being an educational institution for many years, to look at education as an issue. And I think there's no issue that is more important to, to parents and kids throughout the uh, Asia Pacific region. At the heart of the East-West Center's mission and its success over the past 50 years is the experience of its participants. Men and women of high promise from Asia, the Pacific, and the United States. What they learned from each other and the lifelong friendships that were forged was as important as a university degree or program certificate. 
through my learning here, I became better informed. And with that increased knowledge, I believe I developed a respect and in the process acquired more mutual trust, which has formed the foundation of lifelong friendship that I have had and I have enjoyed professionally and personally throughout the decades. One thing I've learned and, and partly working with people in the East-West Center is that you don't have a local pers a perspective, you have a global perspective. So you want to work with, encourage people from your country or from other countries to have this global opinion that, okay, we want to work for the environment on, on a big scale. So I will definitely say that it's uh, opened my mind in that sense. And when I go home, I feel um, I'll be more open-minded and view things in um, a global perspective that way. 50 years ago, congressional leaders felt Hawaii, with its dominant Asia-Pacific cultural foundation, was the best place to build an East-West center. And in the decades since, the islands have put their imprint on participants. Well, it's not just the center, but I think when they come, the center is a place where they learn to mix with each other and begin to understand. But I think that they pick up a lot, some of the aloha spirit that exists out here. When they leave the center to go out, they look at Hawaii and it's a very different kind of place than from where they came from, wherever they came from. People usually mention the fact that it was in Hawaii was a real strength. That the Hawaii environment, the beautiful environment, but also the diverse, open community that's here is very supportive to being a student at the East West Centre. After I got here um, and interacted with people, um, I am really appreciative of how flexible people are in their thoughts. I mean, it's not that you're sticking to what you think only, but you're able to understand. Leadership is about service. And the East West Center, I think, has been teaching that for 50 years, that you can change the world, and you change it in a way that serves other people. While at the center, the seeds of understanding were planted within the students while they were studying together, playing together, working together in an environment which promoted interculturation. And I think that as alumni, they've taken these seeds and nurtured them and um, then built bridges to understanding. The investment we have made in the Ishboy Center has done a million times is spending as far as benefits and contributions go to the United States. We have maintained good relations. Many of the students who participated in the exchange program have become important leaders in their countries. As a result, providing better understanding at the high policy level you can't buy that, as one of the commercials would say, priceless.